John chapter number 10. This chapter is so loaded, so much preaching in it. I just want to focus on a little thought God gave me. We'll begin reading a verse number 7, very familiar verses. The Bible says, Then Jesus saith unto them, Again, verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. You better put your you be, you better pay attention to who you put your trust in. A lot of false teachings, a lot of false prophets, a lot of thieves and robbers out there. They're more interested in you giving to the, the to their ministry than you giving your heart to Jesus. You ought to run from them. Hmm? Is that all that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for the good Sunday school hour. Father, we thank you for the good singing. We thank you for being the good shepherd, being a good God. Lord, we're thankful for Calvary. Oh, how Calvary changed my life. And anybody in here this morning that has put their faith and trust in Jesus, it's because they went by Calvary, by faith. Lord, we bless you. We need your help today. Lord, I realize after revival meeting and folks being physically tired and Lord, then the rain, it affects our spirit, spirit our psyche. God, we just need your help. So we pray you'd put a hedge about us and we certainly plead the blood of the Lord Jesus over this place. We pray that you'd manifest yourself in a powerful way. Lord, I pray the word of God would become real to us. And I certainly pray if there be any amongst us today who've not been to Calvary, today would be the day of their salvation. God, we pray for the saints of God that, Lord, you would stir in their hearts. And God, we pray that revival fires would continue, that, God, we'd see you do great and mighty things which we know us not. Lord, get glory to your name. Be with all the prayer requests. And God, have your will and way amongst us, and we'll thank you for it. For it's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want you to notice a, a couple things as a way of introduction. The first thing I want you to notice is the door. We find that Jesus mentions twice here that he's the door. Verse number 7, he says, I'm the door of the sheep. Verse number 9, he says, I am the door. Can I say, first of all, that Jesus is the door of salvation? Again in verse 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Does not say by the baptismal pool. Does not say through church membership. Does not say through shaking a preacher's hand or giving an offering. Does not say putting your faith in the Pope uh, or any denomination or any religion. Uh, Jesus said, I am the door. Uh, in John 14, 6, he said, Jesus saith unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Uh, Acts chapter 4 verse 12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other, uh, for there's none other name under heaven given among men uh, whereby we must be saved. Uh, Hebrews chapter 9 verse 11 says, uh, But Christ being come a high priest of good things to come uh, by a greater more perfect tabernacle, uh, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, uh, neither by the blood of goats and of calves, uh, but by his own blood uh, he entered in once into the holy place, uh, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Uh, 
There's been a lot said this morning and sung about Calvary. Uh, uh, you see, Jesus uh, went to the cross of Calvary, uh, shed his life's blood, uh, was buried and rose again uh, according to, to the Scriptures. Uh, and can I say... Uh, when the Lord Jesus did all of that, uh, He made a way. Uh, he made access uh, for you and I to enter through Him uh, that we might be saved uh, and changed uh, and transformed uh, into His likeness. Uh, that one day, hallelujah, uh, we'll get to go to glory and be with Him forevermore. Uh, the only way to heaven is through Him. Now they tell me the average Jewish man and Jesus' day was about five feet six inches tall. They also tell me that if a man stretches out his arms uh, from finger to tip to fingertip, uh, if you to turn it uh, uh, on, a, on an angle, that's about how tall he would be. You say, how uh, 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 big is the door to heaven? Uh, because uh, religion will tell you there are many roads that lead to heaven. Uh, uh, but can I say there's only one way to heaven? Uh, and if Jesus was the average Jewish man's size, uh, uh, the door to heaven's only about five feet six inches uh, uh, wide. It's through him and him alone. Uh, isn't it amazing? As a man, he was only five feet six inches uh, but as God, he can reach from the highest heaven to the lowest hell. Uh, he is uh, uh, the God of glory. Uh, he's the door. Uh, he's not only the door of salvation, he's the door of the sheep. Look at verse number 7. And then saith Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. And can I say in this building, there's only two types of people that the Bible types out. There are sheep. Those are the crowd that later in the chapter he says they know his voice and they follow him. And there's goats. Goats don't follow, they butt. A goat says, well, preacher, uh, I know you're saying something about Jesus being the only way, but uh, I believe this, or but I believe that, or but... Uh, well, you better watch somebody that's always butting up against the Bible and against the Word of God. They're a goat, not a sheep. Jesus said, I am the door of the sheep. Uh, those that have been through him, they're sheep. Can I say something? He died for the sheep and he delivered the sheep. He's the door of the sheep. Thank God I'm a sheep. Now, that's nothing to be real proud of. You know, sheep's the dumbest animal in the, in the world. Hmm? And you've got to admit, how many times has God been good to you and yet you'll turn around and fail him. You'll turn around and uh, do something real uh, 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 despicable to him, but yet he still loves you and he still forgives you and he still helps you. I'm thankful for that multiplied salvation, Brother Clint. Huh? You know, the Bible says in Christ we're renewed every day. <clears throat> huh? My salvation took place the third Saturday night of March in 1974, but can I say it is a progressive thing because every day I wake up I'm still saved. Because his blood is the testimony to the Father for me. I've been robed in his righteousness and I bless the Lord, uh, but I still fail his grace. I fail him every day. But yet, he's still the door to the sheep. But I also thought about this. He's the door of satisfaction. Look what he said in the last part of verse 10. He said, I am come that they might have life. Who? The sheep. And that they might have it more abundantly. Hmm? Can I say, the night I got saved, my grandfather, when I got up from the altar, he looked at me, he said, boy, are you satisfied? Can I say, 47 years later, I'm still satisfied in what Jesus did in my life, and more so, uh, 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 when I got saved, I didn't know anything. Uh, and the more I've learned about the Bible, I learned how great a God He is, uh, and how much He did for me when He saved me. Huh? I'm glad, I'm satisfied in what He, I don't need to look for anybody else. He has the words of eternal life. So we see in these verses the door. I want you to notice he also deals with a dousing. Dousing. Again in verse number 10, he says, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Can I say if all he gave us was life, that had been enough. I'm glad I have eternal life. I don't have to wait to see if I have eternal life. I have eternal... By the way, you do too. Everybody's eternal. Where you spend eternity is based on what you do with the door. 
If you haven't trusted Christ, you'll live eternally, but you'll live in the lake of fire in the charred region of the dam paying for your own sin because you wouldn't let Jesus pay for your sins. But can I say, if all he gave you, Brother Jim, was life, that'd been enough. But he said, no, that's not the way God does it. You know, he does it pressed down, shaking, bubbling over. He says, I want to give you life more abundantly. He says, I want you to not only have eternal life, I want you to have a good life now that is more abundant than anything this world has to offer. And can I say it is? Uh, 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 I don't have to uh, uh, lay out with a bottle or without a needle on Friday and Saturday night uh, uh, hoping to uh, uh, forget about my miserable existence uh, and hoping that I get a, a little release uh, 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 from reality for a little bit. Uh, can I say I'm in my right mind this morning uh, and I'm as high as you can get uh, uh, because I know what Jesus has done for me uh, and I have joy unspeakable and full of glory in my soul. Uh, hey, I don't have a hangover uh, but I I haven't gotten over uh, what he did for me some 47 years ago. Uh, he doused me with an abundant life. You say, what are you talking about? Well, can I say, first of all, he douses you with peace. I don't have to worry when I put my head on my pillow at night what happens in the middle of the night if I check out. Because to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And I have the peace of God, and I have peace with God. What a blessing. Uh, Philippians 4, 7 says, And the peace of God, uh, which passes all understanding, means you can't even explain how good God is in your soul, uh, 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 shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Huh? I don't have to worry about who's in the White House. I don't have to worry about who's in the governor's mansion in Frankfurt. Uh, I don't have to worry about uh, 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 the price of gasoline. Oh, I don't like it, but I don't have to worry about it. Uh, I don't have to worry about a thing because I have the peace of God in my life. Uh, and David said he'd never seen the righteous forsaken nor seed begging bread. Uh, God's been good to me. I mean, God has put some provisions in his word for me to walk by and to live by. And I found when I do it God's way, God, he certainly does flood my life with his presence. Uh, he douses us with peace. Jesus will also douse you with prosperity. You say, you preaching a prosperity gospel? I sure am. Yeah, because the Bible says in Psalm 68, 19, Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation, Selah. In other words, he has prospered, prospered me far better than I'd have prospered myself. Mm. Every day he loads me with benefits. Every day he blesses me. I'm faring much greater uh, and reaping far greater than what I've sown, my dear friends. Uh, God's been good to me. Uh, you'll find no complaints from me. Uh, hey, uh, he's been a good God. Uh, he supplied every need and give me most of my wants. Uh, I bless the Lord, huh? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people out there scraping every nickel, trying to find some satisfaction in this world. Uh, they're hocking their uh, 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 self uh, 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 in everything they've got to find something in this world that really doesn't bring much pleasure. I want to tell you something. God has prospered his people. Look at us. Some of you were in the gutters. Some of you were drunks and dope addicts. Some of you were sinners and uh, of the lowest degree. And some of you, uh, I mean, you didn't have nothing when God came by your way and found you. Uh, look at you today. Uh, uh, you look nice. Uh, you drove in here in something nice. Uh, you live somewhere nice. Uh, uh, God's been good to you. Uh, he's blessed you to be able to give an offering here in a little bit. Uh, and he's blessed you to meet all your needs, pay all your bills. Uh, hey, uh, uh, what a blessing. God's been good. This week will be Thanksgiving week. A lot of folks are having to depend on food banks and free stores to have a Thanksgiving meal. God's going to bless most of us to have a feast. We'll have more food left over. I'm just telling you, God's been good to us. He's just doused us with prosperity. But he's also doused us with profitability. You see, God saved you and he wants something out of his investment. And he makes you profitable to himself. How does he douse us with profitability? In your walk. 
you don't walk like you used to. When Jacob wrestled with the Lord, he walked different after that. Had a new name. When you uh, 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 wrestled with the Lord under conviction and finally yielded in salvation, guess what? He wrote down a new name for you in glory. Uh, you don't walk the same anymore. I don't go the same places I used to go. I don't act the same way I used to act. Uh, why? Uh, he has touched your walk. Uh, hey, uh, since you've got saved, uh, you've been growing in grace. You don't walk like you did when you first got saved. Uh, why? He has blessed you and made you profitable on himself. Uh, he, pro he makes you profitable in your walk. He makes you profitable in your works. Listen, I don't work to get saved. I work because I am saved. And can I say anything you do for the Lord really in work? It's a joy. But uh, uh, Elisha Cole says this. Uh, said, faith justifies the person and works justifies his faith. That is good. Mm -hmm. I say by faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I live by faith. And I even work by faith, but my works justify my faith. You ever know somebody that claimed to get saved and they hang in there for just a little while and then they're back you know, to the same vomit they supposedly got saved out? You know what happened? They really didn't get saved. They was trying to work for it. But if somebody really gets saved, it'll start showing on them. And it'll start showing out in their life. Because they have a changed life. And it'll start showing out in their works. All of a sudden, they start telling others about Jesus. All of a sudden, they start coming to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. You just see it on them. Hmm? But can I say this? He makes us profitable in our witness. Now, if I tell you about some restaurant to eat, let's just pick a restaurant. How about Kelly Seafood in Shelby, North Carolina? You mind if I pick that restaurant, Brother Brian? No, because he's been there. Now, this restaurant is a hole in the wall. It's a little block building, not very big at all. Probably only seat about 35, 40 people inside it. Uh, uh, it's just got long tables and picnic benches. And uh, they serve you, Brother Aaron, with paper plates uh, and plastic utensils. Uh, I mean, there's nothing fancy about it at all. I mean, Long John Silver's, uh, 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 KFC, uh, Lee's Fried Chicken, all of them's fancier than this place. But the food. I always get flounder. You see, they have a fish camp. We don't know what fish camps are up here. What they, they have these big camps with big wells of water with fish. And they'll draw out the fish, clean them that morning, and fry them up and serve them to you that evening. You get a small, Brother Clint, small plate of flounder, about six or seven pieces of fish, a whole basket of hush puppies, fries, and slaw for about seven bucks. Yeah, I'm, I'm telling you, and every bite of that fish makes you go, oh. you know what I'm saying? Huh? Now, I can describe Kelly's seafood. I can describe the owner. I always pick on him, and he picks on me. He's like, Kentucky. That's all he calls me, Kentucky. Because every time I go to Shelby, North Carolina, I'm down there about five, six times a year. You know I'm going to Kelly's uh, uh, fish camp. Uh, matter of fact, everybody I preach for knows I'm going to Kelly's. They, well, when I get down, they say, when are we going to Kelly's? Because I'm going to Kelly's. Because uh, uh, I like to eat there. Uh, 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 but listen, uh, I can describe it to you. Uh, it'll whet your appetite for fish. If you like fish, uh, Clint's ready to go right now. Uh, uh, but listen, uh, uh, it's because I've been there, uh, because it's impacted me, uh, and I can describe it to you. Uh, but can I say, uh, when uh, you start telling the, uh, the world about Jesus, if you don't know him, you can't describe him. Uh, but if you start saying, hey, uh, I once was lost. Uh, I once was a sinner. Uh, I once my life was out of control. Uh, but Jesus came to where I was. Uh, and I put my faith in him. Uh, and he changed my life. Uh, I'm no longer headed that direction. Uh, and I found he's altogether lovely. Uh, I found 
needs a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. Uh, I found that he gives me peace and strength and help. Uh, hey, you start telling about him, it profits the Lord because folks start listening to what you have to say. And we see the dousing. We see the door. But unfortunately in this text, we find the devil. Look again in verse 10. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. The thief that he's referring to is the one who empowers the thieves and robbers that came before the door of the sheep. The thief he's referring to is the sorry, low-down, no-good, wicked devil. Can I say the devil is deceiving? He's a liar and the father of it. Can I say he's deviant? He's wicked, but he's sly and he's crafty. Can I say he's divisive? The devil always wants to build wedges. You know who's behind racism? The devil. Because the Bible says God's no respecter of persons. Uh, the little children used to sing red, yellow, black, and white. They're all precious in his sight. But who divides? The devil. Who divides and splits churches? The devil. Who divides marriages? The devil. He's divisive. Uh, he's always against unity. Uh, can I say he's delusive? Uh, he's sly and cunning. Uh, he's determined. Uh, he's more faithful than any of you, uh, and myself included. Uh, he's always on uh, uh, watch, and he's always on guard. Uh, and the devil's damning. Uh, he wants to damn every person to hell. Uh, and those that get saved, uh, he wants to wreck your life so you can't lead anybody to Christ. Uh, all that in mind, I want to preach on this thought this morning. I want to preach on what the devil wants to do after revival meeting. Boy, the Lord walked through here every night. And I, I did not find out till after the meeting was over, I was not privy to then, but now know that, why a couple nights it was a little odd in here, there was a lot of opposition I found out about later. But in spite of that, God still showed up and helped us. The Lord really blessed this week. I want to tell you something, the devil didn't like it. So what the devil wants to do after revival me? We find it in verse number 10. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Can I say the devil desires to steal? He wants to steal any seed that's been sown in your life. Matthew 13, 4 says, And when he sowed, talking about the parable of the sower, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Can I say the devil's foul, and he's got fowls. And he wants to devour any seed that hasn't already taken root in your heart. Hmm? Can I say in using fowls, he uses a lot of them. I preached on that one time. There's all kinds of fowls. There's... Penguins, they're all dressed up, but they're very cold. Some of you might be in that category today. There's buzzards, they always feast on dead things. It's amazing, there's always somebody wants to bring up your past, what you used to be. That's a buzzard. Hmm? Uh, can I say, uh, 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 there's crows, they're always popping off at the mouth. Huh? Uh, there's loons, they're a little crazy. There's always a little crazy in every Baptist church, huh? I won't point you out, you know who you are, huh? But can I say, the devil sends his imps to try and rob and steal the seed that God tried to burn in your heart this week. Hmm? Can I say this? He wants to steal the sanity of every believer. Hmm? The Bible says in Isaiah 26, 3, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. But the devil wants to get your mind off the Lord. Uh, he doesn't want you trusting God. Uh, and he'll try to rob your sanity by getting you uh, involved in everything going on in this world. huh? Hmm? Even little subtle things that really isn't wicked. But if it takes your mind off of God, he wins. 
Can I say something else? He wants to steal the strength of every believer. Nehemiah 8.10 says, Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For the day is holy unto the Lord, neither be ye sorry. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. He wants to steal the strength of every believer. What's he want? Your joy. Hmm? I've never seen a time when so many of God's people are so down. Hmm? Some of you walking on your lower lip. I mean, all you're doing is saved and going to heaven. Somebody years ago had a great acronym for joy. Jesus first, others second, yourself last. You do that, you'll have joy. But if you get that all out of whack, Y-O-J doesn't make any sense. Mm. But that's what he wants to do. He wants to steal your joy, your strength. Because when you have joy, you can't be defeated. Mm. Mm, let me have some Joy is not an emotion. Joy is a presence. Mm. So we see the devil, after revival meeting, wants to steal. Mm. He wants to steal the strength of your cheerfulness. Christians ought to be cheerful. There's a lot of people in this world depressed. We ought to be cheerful. He wants to steal your contentment. I'm satisfied being saved. But he wants to take, take that from us. He wants you to find satisfaction in something else. He wants to steal the strength of your clarity. Your vision. Because where there is no vision, the people perish. He wants, he wants your clarity of thought. Hmm? He's a sorry devil. And he's slick. And he's trying to steal some things from you this morning. Hmm? How many of you, when you left your house, locked it? Three of us. All right, I'm going to all your house next week when you're in church. When you got out of your car, you locked your car. I mean, we're at church. I mean, you locked your car. I did. I mean, if people rob from God, they rob stuff out of my car. Huh? Well, if we'll lock our house and we'll lock our cars, why won't we lock our lives? Insulate it. How do you lock it? With the Word of God. The things of God. You're not careful. That sorry booger will sneak in and he'll steal some of the things God put in your life this week. Do you ever wonder why a couple weeks after a revival meeting can't even resemble what, that there was ever a meeting around the house of God? Because the sorry devil showed up. He's trying to take back everything you gained. He wants to steal. Can I say secondly? He wants to kill. Thief coming not but for to steal and to kill. What's he want to kill? He wants to kill any gains you've made this week. Hmm? He wants to stop it right in the tracks. Hmm? You ever, oh, we're big sports guys, especially football. You ever watch a football game? Boy, both teams come out, they're jacked up at the beginning. And the team will make a play. Boy, they're all jumping up and down and everything. First, first series, you know, they're all, well, a lot of people get all excited in that first series, but you know what? There's four quarters before it's over. A lot of people after revival meeting are all excited, jumping up and down and everything. Friend, we're in a race. We're in a battle. Your little victory might have helped you this week, but is it going to sustain you for the weeks to come? That's all dependent on whether or not you let the devil kill the gains you've made. Hmm? You know, sports are won in momentum. Whatever team gets the momentum tends to score and win the game. Certain plays can change the momentum. You got some momentum this week. The devil wants to change the momentum. He's Amen. wanting to kill the gains you made this week. Stop them in their tracks. He wants to kill the goals you set. Throughout the week, the Lord spoke to your heart and you said you made up goals for your life. Maybe to pray more. Maybe to uh, uh, read your Bible more. Maybe to witness more. Maybe to uh, spend more time just meditating on the Lord. You set some spiritual goals in your life this week. He's wanting to kill that. Mm -hmm. He wants to kill the desires you have for the service of God. 
He wants to kill the determination you have for the things of God. He wants to kill the defining God has placed in your heart. All those things God showed you this week, you said, that's what I'm going to start doing. He's wanting to kill it. Because if you start doing those things, you'll impact somebody else's life. It'll impact your life. And in so doing, you'll impact somebody else's life. And he doesn't want that. He doesn't want anybody's life impacted by yours. He wants to impact your life. He wants to kill the gains you've made, the goals you've set. He wants to kill the glow you obtain from God. Some of you got some help this week and it showed on you. He's wanting to eradicate that. He's wanting to say, uh, nope. Can't have you going to the job on Monday all fired up with a glow about you. Everybody's going to say, what in the world's going on in your life? Jesus. He don't want that. He wants you all in the mully grubs. Kind of like some of you look today because it's rain outside. That's what he wants. Hmm? thief coming for to steal and to kill and then lastly he comes to destroy he's a destroyer matter of fact read over there in Revelation that's what he's called Apollyon the destroyer hmm and I say he wants to destroy your confidence toward God when you have faith you can move mountains and when you have faith your spirit cannot be broken so he wants to destroy that all your confidence, all your trust, all your faith in God. He wants to destroy that. He wants to destroy your commitments to God. Some of you made commitments this week. He's wanting to destroy that. Because if you follow through with those commitments, it'll make an impact in the kingdom of God. He wants to destroy your comfort from God. Some of you got help this week. He's wanting to destroy that. He's wanting to keep your nerves all tore up and been out of shape. Hmm? can I say this he wants to destroy your character before the godless when you get out in the community he wants you to act like the community he wants you to look like the world smell like the world and act like the world you know what somebody that looks like the world smells like the world and acts like the world you know what they are they're of the world he doesn't want you to make a difference having compassion being kind to people that don't deserve it, being good to people that don't deserve it. He don't want to see any of that. He wants to destroy your character. And then can I say this? If he does, he'll make certain to magnify your life so everybody can see it. Hmm? The thief cometh not but for to steal, kill, and destroy. That's what he wants to do right now. Now yet, the Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So we have everything in Christ to defeat the devil. The real question is, will we? Will we let Christ overcome the wiles of the devil? Hmm? See, the devil can only drive you to your knees. And then he trembles when you get on your knees. Because he knows all of heaven stops and the Lord listens when you pray. And he knows when God shows up, he's a defeated devil. The thief cometh not but for to steal, kill, and destroy. The worst thing we can do is not depend on Christ when the devil shows up. The worst thing we can do is succumb to whatever the devil throws in our way whatever pity party he wants you to listen to and fall apart of whatever he designs because he's slick he knows you he knows your weaknesses and he's going to magnify those the days to come because he wants to still kill and destroy that's what he does now isn't it a blessing that I you know, read later in the chapter I'm in the, his, in the Lord's hand his hand's in the Father's hand. No man can pluck me out of the Father's hand. That means the devil can't get me. Hmm? We need to have that mindset. Hmm? When the devil shows up, all we're going to do is call on the Lord. Let the Lord take care of him. Hmm? Let me say this. 
if you didn't come this week or you didn't move this week or you didn't get anything this week out of revival well the devil's got you right where he wants you and you didn't get the help that you could have gotten now there was some providentially hindered that watched and they got help I've got a cousin down in Atlanta she watched every night she texted me this morning and said we, we weren't able to be there but we got so much help from revival meeting watching it hmm? Hmm. now watching it isn't like being here but I'm glad you can still get help. But some didn't get any help. And the devil's in the shadows. He's not even worried about you. God help us to not let the devil overcome us. And if you's here this morning and didn't get any help this week, you ought to get in the altar and get some help today so the devil will be worried about you too. Because really, a hundred years from now, the only thing that's going to matter is what we did for Christ. And when we let the devil overcome us, we're not doing anything for Christ. Revival meetings all about getting our focus back on Christ and doing what we should for him. I wonder this morning, did the Lord impact you this week? If he did, I promise you the devil didn't like it. But take refuge. The Lord's whipped him every time he's faced him. The devil's no match for the Lord. You just jump in the lap of the Lord and the devil forget all about you. Hmm? The best thing you can ever do is stay on fire for God. Oh, the devil won't like it. There's nothing he can do about it as long as you walk hand in hand with Jesus. Are you listening? Don't let the devil steal, steal, kill, or destroy what you got this week. Don't let him. You have the secret. His name is Jesus. Don't let the devil overcome you. Don't let him put thoughts in your mind. That's where he usually attacks us. Don't let him bog you down. Just keep your eyes on Jesus. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, you can overcome the devil. My dear friends, get all you can of God. Shine his lights in this dark world and make the devil mad. And I promise you, Jesus will be glad. I'd rather please Jesus than give in to the devil, wouldn't you? If you're here today and you're not saved, there's been a lot said about Calvary, you ought to come this morning and get saved. We don't know when Jesus is coming back, but when he does, it'll be too late for you, friend. So why don't you, why don't you just come give your heart and life to Jesus? Say, preacher, I've really been struggling. Why don't you come give it to Jesus? He'll help you with it. Hmm? Preacher, the devil's been on my back. Well, you've carried him long enough. Why don't you come and get the Lord's help and he'll, he'll take care of the sorry devil uh, you don't have to succumb to the devil you can overcome him through the Lord Jesus Christ not I but Christ that liveth in me today the master will help you let's all stand brother Clint come get a song of invitation you ought to build yourself upon your most holy faith because I promise you the devil's a seeking after you you ought to come get some help this morning. Some are. If you're here today not saved, you ought to come give your heart and life to Jesus. They're picking out a song. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we love you. Lord, we hate the devil. Lord, we're glad one of these days you're going to throw him off in the lake of fire forever and ever. What a blessing that'll be. Lord, we love that verse, Revelation 22, 3. When we get to heaven, there'll be no more curse. And God, now we have to contend with the devil. But you've given us a shield of faith to quench all his fiery darts. So help us, Lord, to use the shield of faith, the sword of the Spirit. Help us to lean on thine understanding. Help us, Lord, to trust in the Lord. Lord, do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Bind the powers of hell. Help your children. Help the sheep. And God will thank you for it. God, certainly for somebody here today not saved, I pray they'd come give their heart and life to Jesus. Lord, have your way in this invitation. Bless these that are already in the altar. Get glory to your name. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.